Hey guys, welcome to another speed paint video. This week I'm going to be drawing something completely different than to what I'm used to. I'm going to be honest, I did fight with myself whether or not I was actually going to post this, but then it came to the point where I was like, I'm going to either post this video or no video, and well, I mean, there's a deciding factor for you. I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I can never start a sketch with like all sides of the canvas showing. I don't know why. It's just a weird little quirk, but to try and fight that, I just decided to zoom in like I normally do, but then draw a box that I wanted to keep my picture inside of. That way I could work on drawing bust ups, which I find much more difficult than drawing the full body. I, I don't know why either. <laughs> so because I drew like a box, I'm able to, I know where like the border is and where I need to stay within, but because it isn't the actual ends of the canvas, I can still draw outside of it, and that way I have a lot more freedom to adjust things as I need in the future or the progress of drawing the picture and I actually end up changing the size of the box quite a few times I think I like well I actually shrank her inside the box and then I changed the size of the box I like elongated it and so it ended up being a much taller illustration than I had planned in the beginning but because I used separate layers I was able to you know go with the creative process and as I drew it adjust things the way I wanted them to be and then once I had sketched out the layout of the illustration, I went in with some colors and just tried to figure out what kind of colors I wanted to use later. I actually do add some line art and then recolor it, but this was just sort of just to get my mind going and figure out what colors I wanted where. At this point I realized I didn't really want that weird flood of butterflies coming out from her head and I decided to change it to like a ponytail. It's, I mean, I like that way better. And then after I was all set with the colors, I started the line art. When I started this line art section, it was actually meant to be a second sketch layer, but then as I was doing it, I realized I was actually making a lot of those lines as if they were final line art, so I was able to just use that later. Although a few of the um, lines weren't closed lines, and I like to, when I do my line art, close all the lines so that I can use the paint bucket tool later. But because some of these lines weren't closed, I did have to just go in and fix some things later. But I think it still saved me time in the long run. I think every artist has those 1 to 3 to 37 things that they have trouble with. Or sometimes they don't have trouble with, and then some days they just really struggle. And today it was hands for me, and they were, oh my goodness. You can see how many times I redraw this. I don't... I don't know, man. I In the end, I still just decided to go with it. Like, I knew I wasn't going to get it today, so I just decided to, you know, finish the illustration and see what it looked like in the end. Because sometimes when it comes down to those things, you're nitpicking at things that no one's even going to notice, except that now I'm pointing it out. But in all honesty, you are, you're going to see more problems with your own drawing than most people will. So I decided to just, you know, finish up the illustration. And sometimes when it's done, something that felt like it was such a huge problem with your drawing ends up being just something that was kind of on the side. I think the one I'm starting right now is actually the hand I decided to go with. That's the point where I was just like, you know what, let's just do this. This is what we're gonna have. The end. <laughs> I feel like this commentary is really depressing. I'm sorry. Okay. No, from this point forward, we're going to be positive. So with this hand, I realized something was missing, so I just added that thumb in that space between like the forefinger and middle finger. And it definitely looked better afterwards. It felt more like a hand. It wasn't just like a flat hand. Now it was like, oh, it was almost three-dimensional because, hey, I remember there was a thumb that goes somewhere on that hand. And then when it came to drawing, like, the long, flowy hair, I really enjoyed that part. It was a lot of fun. It was like, I don't know, there's just so much. And it was like defying gravity and going up instead of down. And that was really fun to emulate. I just, I, I don't know, I like that part. That was fun. You might have noticed like a little bit of a jump. Um, that was because I really struggled drawing the monarch butterfly that was up on top of her head because since it was so big, I needed to make sure it looked kind of like an actual butterfly and not just my weird cartoony ones that I always draw. So I actually, there was a time when I turned off my screen recording software and I was just like really trying to get this right and I spent a lot of time off camera doing that and then eventually I just came back and once I was sort of happy with the way the monarch looked like, so that's that's what the jump was that you saw. Then after that, the line art was done, and I decided to move on to the coloring. And I gave her like a really dark, almost well, it's a really dark brown, but it's like almost black because I wanted it to like go well with the dark um, colors on the monarch with the orange and the black. And that was that was a decent choice. I think it worked pretty well. 
then I just added flat colors to the rest of her, like her skin and her dress and her shirt. Well, and the butterflies, of course. I had a little bit of shading to the black parts of the drawing because the black was just way too dark with the line art and it was really blending in. So I used like a light gradient, added that to the black, all the black sections, and then I added a bit of shine to the butterflies and like the skirt. Then I set to work on the wings of the butterfly, which were much more complicated than I had set myself up for. I don't know. <laughs> um, I just kept kind of, you know, trying out some different things and trying to figure out what the butterfly looked like. I had a few references that I was looking back and forth at. Um, it turned out pretty well. I eventually realized that using a brush with um, the opacity sensitivity on probably wasn't the best bet so I decided I just went over that again with a solid brush just to make the colors more vibrant and more contrasting with the orange you know the black and the orange and it looks a lot better that way I definitely like that then it was time to do some kind of background I knew I didn't want to just leave it white and um, I decided to use some purples to contrast with the oranges um, it turned out pretty good, and then I realized that um, it was just a little too boring, so I started adding some more colors and just throwing them in there and you know, blending it together and just trying to make something a little bit more interesting in the background than just a white background. Um, it worked pretty well. I don't know if I would do it again this way. I'd try something different, but it looks pretty cool, you know, with the drawing, and I like that it's not too complicated so that the drawing still stands out from it. Then I just added and adjusted, like, the hue and saturation of the whole drawing and some of the contrast and the levels and things, just because it wasn't standing out quite enough from the background, and I didn't like that there was, um, I don't know, all the colors just sort of mushed together. That was it. That's the finished illustration. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle to draw this. It was uh, it was a learning process, and I'm definitely better for it, so there's a plus. Anyway, thanks for sticking through this video, and uh, I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!